this made water be tied God will take care of you Beneath his wings of love abide God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. What may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean, weary one, upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care. Through every day or on the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Good morning. If everybody could find their seats. Doug told me not to touch this microphone because I think I messed it up last week, so I'll leave it alone this week. We'd like to welcome everybody to Homecoming Sunday this week, and we're so grateful to have Clay and Hazel Morgan back with us today. And we also welcome all of our visitors that are here. Good full congregation, and it's good to see everybody out here this Sunday. Makes it look really good. Were there any birthdays that we've got coming up this week or anything that we need to recognize? Okay, I don't guess we'll be singing today then, okay. All right. Um, back in the um, newborn to two-year-old nursery classroom, there's some old hymnals. They're dated like 1939, I think, and there's probably 60 to 70 of them. If you guys would like one of those, uh, we're, we're wanting you to go get one. If you want a couple of them, get them. We need to get them out of here. So if you would, just go by there and take a look at those. Yeah, if you'd have been here last week, you'd know we said something about that. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rod. <laughs> And you didn't even listen, huh? Okay. okay. <laughs> um, the month of October is going to be Clergy Appreciation Month. And specifically here at Center on October the 9th, we're going to, um, uh, we want to make sure that um, Pastor Mitch and Beth are recognized and we let them know how thankful we are to have them in our, uh, amongst us here. They've been real special to us and like Clay was years ago, and, and so we'll just make sure we make them feel welcome. And I'm sure if you want to invite them out for lunch, they'll go with you probably. <laughs> Bess says yes. Um, I have a couple of totes out in the, uh, one out toward the mailboxes and one down at CFC for Pastures Pantry. They've asked us once again this year to contribute green beans that we'll use those to make up our holiday boxes and they've asked us to get 500 cans, and they want the 15-ounce cans, and we need those by November the 15th. So if you can find it in your heart to purchase some extra cans of green beans and put them in the totes, we would sure would appreciate it. Next, um, Saturday and Sunday on um, October the 1st and 2nd, 
we're going to have our second annual community camp out. I don't know how many of you came last year, but we had a great time for that. On Friday, September the 30th, if you want to come and set up your camper or tent, church will be open for the use, uh, for use of facilities, and you can contact Dina Tolly if you plan on setting up on Friday. And if you do come on Friday, she's got a note that will pool our resources and order some pizzas for those attending on Friday. So then on Saturday, October the 1st, if you don't get set up then, you can come at 10 a.m. and set up your camper or tent. And if you don't have a, camp, a tent or a camper and would like to stay, you can feel free to bring a cot or an air mattress to set up in the CFC. At 2 o'clock, they're going to start having games and, uh, for the families to enjoy which would be cornhole, four in the air, and other activities. Not sure I know what the four in the air is, but it's like a volleyball, okay. But there's four in the air, okay. <laughs> Five o'clock, we're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers served, and they would like for you to bring a dish to share, if you would, if you're coming to that. Six o'clock, we're going to have musical entertainment, and I know last year it was great, so I'm sure it will be again this year. And at 8 p.m., there will be karaoke for adults and kids. So that's, got to, that's going to be fun, I'm sure. Um, I'm not going to sing, but I'm sure there will be a lot of people that will. Please contact Dina if you have any questions. And they would like for you to reserve in advance where they'll know how much food to get. On Sunday, October the 2nd, at 8.30 a.m., and this is part of it, we're going to have an outdoor service, so you need to bring your lawn chairs, and we'll set up in the parking lot. And then at 930, we'll have breakfast, which will be hosted by the United Methodist Men. Next Sunday on, um, at 6 o'clock, we're going to have the administrative board to meet. So make sure that you um, attend that. That's being moved up a week for this month. Council on Ministries Committee will meet Monday, October the 3rd at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Please attend this important meeting. A new members class will be offered for October the 9th and 16th at 5 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We would love to have you join our fellowship by attending these two classes. So if you're interested in becoming a new member, please plan on attending this. Announcements from the Youth Director for October. Youth Director. <laughs> October the 14th and 15th, they're going to have a youth indoor yard sale fundraiser. October the 15th, the youth will feed the homeless. On October the 22nd, we will have our Boo Bash. And if you would like to contribute um, uh, candy, you know, they're, they would appreciate getting that. If you want to set up a, a vehicle for the um, Boo Bash, um, make sure you let them know about that. On October the 23rd, a youth parent involvement night. All youth parents are encouraged to bring a covered dish and join us at Impact from 6 to 8. We will fellowship and worship together and have a parent-student meeting. Then, this is going to be pretty neat, on October the 30th, we're going to have a non-perishable trick-or-treating. We'll be trick-or-treating for non-perishable goods get creative and dress up as a food. <laughs> there will be a prize for the most creative costume. So if any of you can think of a food you'd like to be, please dress up for that. Any other announcements? All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us gather today in your house to worship you and celebrate our church homecoming. Let us take this day to pause a moment and remember our dear saints who have gone on before us to live with you in your kingdom. We pray for those who are sick and ask for your healing. Please be with the families who have lost loved ones and give them comfort. We pray for our nation, Father, and ask that you guide our leaders. Lord, we thank you for sending your servant, Reverend Morgan, to deliver our homecoming sermon today. May we take this message that you have given him and use it for our guiding light for the coming week. We pray these things in your holy, precious name, Father. Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to Center Church and now for our special music. Thank you. 
Can't you just feel all the saints or center church in the room with us after such a pretty song? Thank you, Brenda. Let us stand and sing Blessed Assurance. And if you look in your bulletin, the verse of the month, and please repeat with me, you shall not commit adultery, Exodus 20, 14. Thank you. Good morning, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. Your love endures forever, it never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to be at work in us today, opening our ears to hear and hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. At this time, Lord, we ask that you receive our offerings and continue to supply our needs. You said, give it and all, and it will be given to you. For in the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. 
we give to you today as a response in your, of your goodness to us. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Would the ushers come forward, please?
dear saints who now walk with our Lord and Savior. God wants us to view the death of one of his saints as a joyful occasion. This does not mean we should not feel loss and avoid grieving. Instead, he reminds us that through his salvation, we will be together in heaven again if we too have accepted Jesus. Psalm 27, 4 says, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Our saints are now in their heavenly home. We will now recognize our center family members who have passed since our last homecoming. As we call the name of each beloved saint, we ask that the family please stand as the family representative comes forward to light a memorial candle. Trevi May Yance Weaver. Trevi Yance Weaver was a long time member of the Friendship Sunday School class and had perfect attendance for more than 30 years. She loved being an active part of this church. She taught her family the importance of God by actions as well as words. As her children, we feel blessed to have such a wonderful, godly, loving mother. loved life and lived it to the fullest. His family, his profession, and his hobbies were everything to him. From a young age, he enjoyed speed and racing. He raced jet skis in the water, Ford Mustangs on the ground, and planes in the air. Kale later became Brandon's motocross racing trainer, crew chief, and mechanic. It was the joy of his life to share his passion for speed with his son. Kale's job allowed him to travel the world. He greatly enjoyed visiting different countries and getting to know different cultures. Kale's motto was work hard, play even harder. We miss him so much daily. He is always in our thoughts and our hearts. Divi Pillsbury. Who Divi Pillsbury was and gave is just beginning to be known because her gifts were spiritual and eternal. Divi believed there was nothing greater than serving the Lord and was convinced the best thing we could offer people was a relationship with Jesus Christ. Our mother and grandmother loved the church life and playing piano to her beloved hymns. A local pastor as a young woman who married into ministry at 25, her life spanned the last century across the Bible Belt, a life she recalled vividly with her wonderful memory right up until the day she died at 99. Divi adored her family, her husband, her children, and grandchildren, her many nieces and nephews, and long-departed mother and father and brothers and sisters. Divi was an outstanding teacher, educator, and artist, and musician, and revered theologian. Anyone who encountered Divi Pillsbury believed they were important to her because it was true. She loved her church family at center and actively prayed for each soul. It was her hope and conviction that we will all be reunited in heaven. Renee Craver Bailey. Today we would like to honor and celebrate and remember Renee Craver Bailey. She was a woman of grace and courage. To know Renee was to know someone extraordinary. She had a magical way of bringing joy every time she walked into a room. She had the best advice and taught us all a lesson. Renee was a great teacher. Her advice and guidance will continue to carry us through the joys and challenges that life has to offer. 
She was such a beautiful person inside and out. Renee was her happiest when she was cooking and feeding people. She loved everyone and would do anything for anyone. She was so pure of heart. Her family meant the world to her. She loved her dear husband, Larry, with all her heart and was always happy to be his wife. Their relationship was one everyone could ever dream of having. She loved her girls so much. My sister Heather and I are so blessed to have been able to call her mom. She especially loved being a grandma to little Addison. Renee shared good humor and a big smile with everyone she met. She held her head high until the end, showing what it looks like to finish strong. Renee had her faith and she loved the Lord. We wanted to keep her forever, but the Lord had other plans. With her passing, Renee is leaving behind a legacy of kindness, compassion, and generosity. Her wisdom will be forever, will forever guide the decisions we make through the rest of our lives. We love you, Renee. Phyllis Everhart Leonard. Phyllis loved her church, her husband Tony, her children and grandchildren. She shared her talents as a librarian by serving as our church librarian for many years. Phyllis also served as secretary of the friendship class. Her sweet smile left everyone she met with a blessing. Vaughn Black. Vaughn, known to his children, grandchildren, and many of the young people he taught and coached in recent years as Pops, is greatly missed. If we could send him a letter, this is what we would say. To our dear one, we miss your teasing ways, your chuckle at your own jokes, your love for your family, students, and friends. Your love for God showed through in everything you said and did. We think of you every time we pass by or visit one of the places you loved, drive your truck or eat one of your favorite foods. On our last beach trip in February, we got to enjoy family time and beach music with you. We hold dear the video taken at your last concert that weekend watching the Embers. Thank you for being the honorable, hardworking Christian example that you were to all of us. Charles Lowe Kepley. Charles Kepley, he loved this place. Center Church was his home. He was, a, he was proud to be a lifetime member and servant to his church and to God. He loved his family. Wow, them grandkids really had his heart. You could just mention them and his face would light up. He loved his wife, Vicki, who left to be with Jesus. There was a hole in his heart that was never filled. He loved his kids, Wendy and Tim. He also loved his daughter-in-law, Tiffany, which he would usually take her side over his sons. He was a trustee and served on the board at Center Church for years and received the service award for his work at the church. Charles served on the Booster Club and Welcome and owned the Kepley Machine and Tool Shop. He could make about anything and was amazing to watch. He loved to fish, go on mission trips with the church, go to the beach, and sit on the porch while asking if it was cool outside. Then he loved to come home and sit on his swing under the tree by the shop, which was just the perfect view to watch Mimi wash dishes. He loved to work the Christmas tree lot with his family. Wow, he really loved that time of year and loved selling those trees. He would just sit and watch the people on the tree lot and made sure the kids and parents got a candy cane while looking. People would come and talk to him for hours without even buying a tree. He was always loved beyond any measure. From the grandkids and kids, we love and miss you so much, Pops. George Bud W. Meesemore, Jr. Bud Meesemore loved his wife and daughter, Vanessa, very much. His community and church family were his heart, always so proud to be from Welcome. His wife and daughter miss him dearly, 
but rejoice that he is with his Savior, Jesus Christ. We will now recognize loved ones who were not members of Center Church, but are our brothers and sisters in Christ as we light the community candle. Robert Boswell, father of Kim Craver. Addie Mae Griggs, aunt of Pat Simmons. Phyllis Hatter, sister of Danny Harless. Hank Jordan, cousin of Pat Simmons. Nancy Marlowe, mother of Lisa Bates. Jessica Miller, sister of Woody Johnson. Kyle Miller, brother-in-law of Woody Johnson. Buddy Simmons, nephew of Pat Simmons. Rhonda Myers Street, niece of Pat Simmons. Dottie Wilkes, sister of Wanda McBride. Dottie was special to so many of us. She attended this church for 20 years and was as act as active as if she were a member. Dottie's parents named her after Dorcas in the Bible. And Acts 9.36 destri describes Dorcas as serving others. That is an accurate description of our Dottie. She will continue to be loved and missed. There may be others who have lost a relative or dear friend since last September whom you would like to honor today. Please stand and share their names and their relationship to you at this time. We give thanks for each of our loved ones whom we remember today, for all the ways in which their lives touched ours, and for the ways in which their lives and their love continue to be with us. Hey, I know I'm the new guy here, but um, that was beautiful. What a rich heritage that you guys have, that we have. And uh, I'm so thankful to be part of this. And I have one question. Has God done anything good in your life? We've already commemorated quite a lot this morning. Um, he has done so many good things in my life. And so this song speaks to that. And I hope that you guys can, can worship along with us this morning.
Today is a special day for all of us. Uh, it's one of those bittersweet times, but it's also a celebration when we know our folks are with the Lord, and uh, more of us will go to be with Him shortly, won't we? Thank you, guys. Thank you, choir. What a wonderful gift you gave us today. I want to welcome today a dear friend of this ministry, uh, Clay Morgan. Clay came to my local my home church back at Clinchfield back a long time ago. And uh, this new preacher was coming to our church. And he had been in the community a few weeks. And like I've told you before, we would just come and go. That's just the truth of it. And we were in one of our lulls of where we were go. We were go, gone. And uh, Clay and my Uncle James came to our house to visit us. You may not even remember, but I remember, and that's all that matters. And Clay came to your house, and we're glad he's back at our house today, Lord's house. And we want to just make, is Hazel with you today? Yeah. Where's Hazel at? There's Miss Hazel. Could we make them welcome today? <laughs> and as, as Brother Clay comes, would you stand in reverence for the reading of God's word?
Hear the word of God from Luke 2. I read 39 and 40 and then 52. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And Jesus grew in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. The word of God for us. Amen. What a powerful service of remembrance. It's uh, such, a, such a wonderful service today. And, and uh, Hazel and I are so grateful uh, to be invited uh, to come back and to be here in Center Church. Uh, what a wonderful time we had here. Seven good years. And can you imagine being able to be at Center Church to complete my ministry uh, of 45 years, I believe. What a wonderful time uh, for us to be here. Thank you, Pastor Mitch, uh, for inviting us to come back. We're having a wonderful time uh, greeting you, and you were so good to us. We had the privilege of being here uh, when the CFC uh, was constructed, built, and we had the opportunity to participate in the dedication. So uh, it's, it's a great day for us and a wonderful time of worship and to be together. I'd like uh, for us to, to think about living wisely. What is wisdom? Well, maybe the short answer is to enhance life. Webster defines wisdom as the ability to discern and judge soundly what is true and false, what is proper and improper, what is discreet as opposed to foolish. I think about uh, that s saying that maybe all of us remember. The definition of insanity is keeping on doing the same thing and then expecting different results. Well, I think about that when I try to play golf. Keep on doing the same thing and keep thinking that I'm going to get better results. Sometimes I think, what in the world am I going out here and paying this money to be frustrated and aggravated for? <laughs> well, uh, wisdom, what is it? I have this little um, reading that I'd like to share with you. It's titled, An Autobiography of In Five Easy Chapters, by Portia Nelson. It's an example of keeping on doing the same thing, expecting different results. Chapter one. I walk down the street there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter 2. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend that I don't see it. I fall in again. 
I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there, but I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4. Finally, wisdom comes in. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter 5. I walk down another street. <laughs> well, uh, what is the wisdom? What does it mean to live wisely? Someone uh, who has less formal education than maybe persons with college degrees may sometimes have more wisdom. The person who sits on his porch in the country and whittles may have more wisdom than we think. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the writer, is supposed to have said of Harvard University, they have a lot of branches of knowledge, but sometimes not very much wisdom. And many of us wonder what is being taught in colleges and universities these days. How much wisdom is there? You know, I, I, th I think about the invention of cell phones. Now, I know I'll be stepping on a lot of toes. But cell phones are, wo are a wonderful invention. I've got one in my pocket, and, and it's good to have it. But sometimes I wonder about the wisdom of how it's used. You know how it is. You see persons walking down the street with a cell phone in their hand, checking it every 30 seconds. I go to exercise the gym. I see people trying to exercise but checking their cell phone every 30 seconds. And, uh, and then uh, a couple or a family goes into a restaurant, they sit, sit down to eat, and instead of having a conversation, talking with one another, relating to one another, pull out cell phone. I don't know about that wisdom. Uh, someone has wondered if wisdom was more common when our grandparents were alive than it is today. You know, we've made phenomenal progress technologically but I'm sure, not sure, about whether the technology has been tempered by wisdom. Another writer, Henry David Thoreau, may be right when he called some modern inventions improved means to unimproved ends. The Proverbs in the Old Testament, uh, in the third third chapter in the 13th verse uh, talks about wisdom when it says happy is the one who finds wisdom. She is more precious than jewels. Luke, uh, the second chapter in the 40th verse that I read earlier, Jesus uh, was growing strong and filled with wisdom you may be familiar with uh, some of the so-called wise sayings. I like some of them. It is better to sleep on what you have planned to do than to be kept awake by what you've done. 
Well, uh, I came across another one. Pope Paul, excuse me, Pope John <laughs> the 23rd uh, said, see everything, overlook a lot, correct a little. Well, yeah, I, I, I know you like this one. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Never insult an alligator until you cross the river. <laughs> and an archer, partly to hit the target, pulls and partly lets go. Well, how do we live wisely? I believe that our Lord taught us uh, to take the long view in order to live wisely. Wisdom thinks about the end results. How will what I say or do affect my life or other lives uh, or the community a year from now, 10 years from now, 25 or a lifetime? What does it mean to live wisely? It means to step out of the moment to understand the broader implications. Wisdom keeps the perspective and acts in ways that are beneficial over the long haul. Wisdom is patient and takes time to ponder God's purpose for life. Wisdom I think, can come to us through hard times and joyful times. Wisdom has come to me when I've been able to talk to somebody who has learned how to live wisely. We listen to Jesus in order to get the long view. Jesus had the long view when he refused to turn the stones into bread because he believed uh, that it was not important uh, to gratify his own needs but to take the longer view of the kingdom. There was a, there was a man who uh, really wanted to grow spiritually. So he decided to enter a, a seminary. But when he got to the seminary, he, he realized that, that he could only speak two words every five years. Well, he thought, uh, you know, I'll try it. So he stayed in the, sem uh, the monastery uh, for five years, and he came uh, in to talk to the leader of the monastery, the abbot. And the abbot said, what are your Two words. And he said, bed hard. <laughs> well, he thought he'd try it five more years, and uh, the abbot called him in and asked, well, what are you two words now? He said, food bad. Well, Maybe he thought it'd get better, so he went back for five more years, and the abbot called him in and said, what are your two words? He said, I quit. <laughs> well, you know, it seems to me that he had so focused upon his own needs uh, that, that he lost sight of why he went to the monastery in the first place. You know, Jesus refused to throw himself down from the temple and let the angels take care of him because he knew that in the long view that that was not the way to win the hearts and minds of people to the kingdom of God. Jesus took the long view. He also was tempted by Satan to focus upon the riches of life. Stuff. Stuff. But he refused. That's not the long view of life. That's not living wisely. And Jesus prayed in Get, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane 
Uh, not my will, but thine be done. A long view of life. Jesus didn't want to go to that cruel cross, that brutal death, but he took the long view and gave himself to the will of God. And then a lot of times we're puzzled about why Jesus said, turn the other cheek. He said that to teach us that the way you reduce violence is by not continuing to participate in violence, to return violence or violence, as is going on in so many of the cities of our country. Any time that we return violence for violence, we always end up with brokenness and suffering and heartache. Well, what would it do for me personally if I could live more wisely? That's a question I need to ask myself and you. What would it do for family life? What would it do for marriage? What would it do for schools or churches if we lived wisely? And then in order to live wisely, I think we live generously. When I go to the, uh, a restaurant occasionally, and t- comes time to pay the bill, I often think of this young fellow may be trying to pay his way through college. This woman may be uh, working two or three jobs to make ends meet. This person is not here just for the fun of it. And so I ask myself, how can I be generous? How can I live wisely? How can I live generously? And then then Jesus taught us that if we're going to live wisely, to live lovingly. The Apostle Paul told us about living lovingly when he wrote the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians and, and he said that, that uh, though you acquire knowledge and have faith to remove mountains and yet do not have love, you have missed the purpose of life. Love is not jealous or boastful, arrogant or rude, irritable or resentful. It doesn't insist on its own way. It is wise and it, and it is kind. It's living wisely. Jim remembers his, that his father was killed in an automobile accident. And when the the family received friends, some were rich and some were poor and some were young and some were older. There were blacks and there were whites and there were Asians. There were professionals and there were laborers. And most of the people who spoke to Jim said, I want to tell you that your dad was kind to me. And Jim determined that he, the best tribute that he could pay to his father's life was to take the torch of loving kindness. And then, in order to live the wise life, we have to live God-centered. It has to be God-centered. Jesus Jesus gave us this, an example of, of living the God-centered life, the Father-centered life. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He said that over and over again, and I believe it encourages us to live the God-centered life. In that issue of God, uh, Guidepost magazine, there was a story of a scientist who probed the mysteries of creation and concluded, God did it. 
And then he began to live a God-centered life. Some years ago, Doug Homershaw, the General Secretary of the United Methodist, no, United, Methodist United Nations, said something very beautifully in a prayer, I believe, about living wisely and about living a God-centered life. It's a prayer. He said, Oh God, give me a pure heart that I may see thee, a humble heart that I may hear thee, a heart of love that I may serve thee, a heart of faith that I may abide in thee. I need wisdom. Do you? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we pray for wisdom that comes from our relationship with you. Lord, let your wisdom direct what we say, what we think, and how we live our lives. Amen. Thank all of you for coming today. We're going to go ahead and have a prayer and then over our meal, and then we're going to have a, a blessing. Oh, Lord, 
We thank you today that we could gather in this place and reflect on your goodness and on the wisdom you've given us. And we confess so often we haven't walked in that wisdom, but you've constantly provided it. We thank you for the food that our brother has fed us with today. We pray your blessings upon he and Hazel. God, we pray that you'd bless the food that we're about to eat, that'll nourish us and give us strength, be in our conversations around a table that we might learn from one another, and that we might impart some of your wisdom with somebody else. Now, Lord, go before us to lead us, Go behind us to nudge us. Go above us to protect us. And go beneath us to carry us. As we go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother Clay, if you'll come on, we'll greet the people.